I'm in Woody Allen's film Blue Jasmine. Uh, people have compared it to a lot of things. Uh, in some cases, they notice that he has tied together the Madoff scandal with Tennessee Williams' streetcar named Desire. At least that seems to be a starting off point for the piece. Uh, but it, it really just uses that as a starting point and it kind of mixes these two subjects together to be something that is neither of those two things. In the end, it's a journey you take with Kate Blanchett's character, Jasmine. Uh, what she's been through, uh, you think of her as one thing, perhaps at the beginning of the film, and then she takes you on this very tremulous journey and you get to meet all these interesting uh, characters, people who have been influenced by the life that she's lived. And uh, it's certainly uh, uh, um, an interesting ride and it's an opportunity to see some really wonderful actors doing some fantastic work. People that in some cases you don't get to see presented in the way that we see them in this film, like Andrew Dice Clay, for instance, uh, Louis C.K., um, and then you have, you know, uh, Sally Hawkins and Bobby Cannavale, and it's an amazing group of actors getting to do really wonderful stretches in some cases and some really interesting pieces in uh, Jasmine's journey. I play a guy named Dr. Flicker, who is uh, recommended to Jasmine to be uh, someone that she could possibly have a temp job with. He's looking for someone to fill in a spot at his office. And so uh, he helps her out, gives her a place to come. And then their uh, brief relationship takes a funny turn in the middle of the piece. and. Uh, I don't want to say too much more than that. Apparently Mr. Allen just offers things to people on occasion. Uh, you get a, a call saying Mr. Allen would like you to consider being in a film. And after coming down to the earth for a moment you say yes. <laughs> and then um, a messenger shows up at your door with some pages to look at. Uh, you close the door and the messenger stays out there waiting for the pages when you're done with them because privacy is a big issue in terms of the storytelling that he, he does. Uh, he doesn't want the material to end up in improper hands. So I read the material when it showed up. I gave it back to the messenger. I agreed to the job. I got the pages back, I got to work on them. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things that one can always hope for, yet uh, you just, uh, when it happens, you kind of pinch yourself. So it was a delightful day. Uh, I didn't know anything about the story. Basically, it's of the old Shakespearean tradition of this is your part in the story. You don't know what the rest of the story is, so listen for your cue because that's what you're responsible for. Uh, so yeah, I didn't know how I fit in to the story and uh, I just, in seeing the film for the first time, that was my first impression of, you know, my piece in the mosaic, which was really fun. He seemed to know pretty much what he wanted uh, from the beginning. The little bits of direction he gave me were to basically play it straight. Uh, and also to, in one of the darker moments of one of the scenes, to not take no for an answer. Uh, it was all written out on the pages, and um, I pretty much wanted to do what he was asking me to do. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do a lot of experimentation. Uh, he also told me on the day that we were shooting one of the more serious scenes that it was, uh, he thought of the film as a drama, which, you know, sometimes you can take his material to be quite funny, uh, but I think the bits of direction he gave me as to play it straight and to think of it in that moment at least as a drama 
um, it really kind of falls into that category of some of his more dramatic films like Hannah and Her Sisters, Crimes and Misdemeanors. It has some serious overtones. And it's also interesting in that it kind of changes depending upon which audience is watching it at any particular time. You know, at the premiere it was uh, in New York, it was a New York premiere audience. Uh, here in Traverse City it was uh, a, a cinephile audience. Um, and it's interesting to hear that story told with a lot of um, laughter in the audience and other times when it's quite quiet it kind of takes on a whatever you want it to take on which is kind of magic